Uh, let's welcome back to Powerhouse Panel. Full panel back with us, Mark Halpern, Dan Hayworth, Chris Arps. Uh, good to have everyone with us. You know, things change fast in the Wild West, uh, particularly in Washington, D.C. I remember a Joe Biden tweet about his remain in Mexico, uh, what, what he's going to do um, with regard to remain in Mexico if elected. Uh, take a look at this tweet that Joe Biden sent not that long ago, um, but some pretty strong language when it comes to uh, that remain in Mexico policy. Here it is. Oh, boy, that's challenging to read. Uh, Donald Trump remain in Mexico policy is dangerous, inhumane, and goes against everything we stand for as a nation of immigrants. My administration will end it. Well, Joe Biden, a man of his word, January 20th, signs an executive order ending remain in Mexico. Here we are, almost nine months to the day of Joe Biden in office. It's October 18th, and he is reinstating remain in Mexico. Apparently, it will be reinstated formally and re-implemented in early November. Mark Halpern, to you, pay attention, please. Why do we wait until November? Why is it not instantaneous? Why not reinstate this yesterday? Well, they're still trying to get the Mexican government to agree, which doesn't seem to me to be a sure thing. But also, whenever they do anything on immigration, if they try to move towards a policy of controlling the border, the left freaks out. If they liberalize the border, uh, the center and the right freak out. Uh, they seem to, you know, lurch from one one moment to another to try to deal with the immediate crises rather than having a long term plan. And you're seeing that impact not just uh, what's going on on the border, but the president's poll numbers. Nan, what does this mean just from a political standpoint here? This is a Trump era policy. It was first introduced in 2019. Right now, according to the Border Patrol, we've had 1.5 million illegal crossings at our southern border, and that's only the people that we know about. That's the worst we've seen there in over 21 years. And we don't have the October numbers yet, but the crossings in October could be around 400,000, which would be a record. What do you make of all this? Well, Rob, it's a pragmatic move. It's a move toward the center. It uh, tells you that perhaps there is someone within the Biden administration who understands uh, that this is uh, going south, so to speak, uh, not to pun there, but uh, in every respect. Uh, so it's it's smart to resume the, the Trump policy. It was a good policy to begin with. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think uh, it, it, uh, it signals that uh, the Biden administration is willing to uh, do some things that will displease the left in order to preserve uh, uh, their uh, political future and uh, simply to keep the country from deteriorating further. Chris, Joe Biden called this policy dangerous and inhumane nine short months ago. He said that on January the 20th. What, what's changed? I think what's changed is the Supreme Court upheld a lower court ruling that said that this program has to remain in place. I think the president still has that same policy. And I think, the like Mark was saying, the reason that it's being delayed a bit is because we have to get the permission of the Mexican uh, government uh, in order to implement it. All right. I want to roll through a couple things here quickly. Uh, Mayor Pete, the Transportation Secretary, has been on paternity leave since August, uh, paid paternity leave. They just had twins, he and his husband. Um, and he says that, you know, it's tough to be to be a new dad and to run the country's uh, transportation infrastructure, but it's something that was necessary for he and his husband. Take a listen. I'm not going to apologize to Tucker Carlson or anyone else for taking care of my premature newborn infant twins. The work that we are doing is joyful, fulfilling, wonderful work. It's important work. And it's work that every American ought to be able to do when they welcome a new child into their family. Uh, I campaigned on that, so did the president. The Build Back Better agenda includes provisions for paid family leave. Mark, listen, this is gonna sound insensitive. I, I agree with everything, I'm, I'm a dad, you're a dad, we're all parents here. I, I agree with everything that Pete Buttigieg just said, but unfortunately, the American people don't care about his life. They care about their own um, leave of absence. He could have resigned. He could have not taken the job when he was nominated. Um, th there, there have been multiple stops over the last three months, signposts, where he could have made a different decision. We are now dealing with a crisis when it comes to infrastructure and supply chain that we have not seen in more than a generation, if ever. Uh, what is Pete Buttigieg doing wrong here? Two things. One is there should have been a lot more transparency about the decision he made. And, you know, somebody in that, that does a visible senior position goes on leave, that should be announced. And then second, there should have been a lot of briefing about who's doing his job while he's gone, who, who's the deputy secretary, who are the other officials in the department 
who are taking over at this critical time. Mark, when, quick when, follow. When quick so follow. many of the issues of the department matter. What yeah. do you make of the lack, just about 15 seconds, but what do you make of the lack of follow-up questions? Nobody asked him a follow-up, and he's sitting there droning on about how he was calling his office from home, you know, to try and figure out why trucks aren't delivering goods on time. I wasn't super impressed with the questions he or Dr. Fauci got on the Sunday show. Yes, Dr. Fauci. Uh, you could say he was he he was out yesterday, and we're going to get into that at the top of the hour. Uh, looking forward to that. I got a lot of good stuff from my my favorite uh, my favorite physician. I'm joking, Nan. You're my favorite doctor. It's official. <laughs> I can see that clearly because you're an eye doctor, right? Yes. Any good eye doctor so, yeah. jokes, by the way, for us? <laughs> I feel like there must be great uh, eye doctor jokes. Like with 2020 hindsight, Rob, so. <laughs> I like that. I like that. All right, panel, we'll pick it up top of the hour. Looking forward to it. Thank you.